Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's a wonderful privilege to be here in the presence of God, and uh, I would like to thank God for bringing me here, and I also thank the pastors of this church, and uh, uh, Dr. Henry and Pastor Suresh for introducing me here. Let me just go straight to the Word of God. And uh, uh, when I was praying, uh, God just gave me this particular scripture uh, to share with you all this morning. Uh, would you like to turn your Bibles with you, with me, uh, to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 30. I'll read it for you. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. The reason I believe God gave me this word, the scripture, was because uh, America, this is a blessed nation. Uh, today we are here, me as a pastor serving a church in Bangalore and uh, uh, India, and we have few branch churches, and it is because of the missionaries who came from this land, this country, to our country. If that was not possible that day, we would have not been known about Jesus Christ, and today I would have not been standing here ministering this wonderful and powerful word. India, sorry, United States of America has been blessed in such a way. I, w I was also reading about certain things about this nation and I understood how this nation was built and, and how the leaders were, the, the, uh, oh, oh, the leaders of the initial stages, the presidents and everyone, how spiritual they were, how, how they gave preference to God and priority to God and all those things. Even after coming to United States of America, I got to read a Bible, Amplified Bible, American version. And when I was reading that, there were six principles about this nation. And I believe the second point which I read was, it says that even the education system introduced to this nation is not to educate someone secularly, but the education system came to this nation so that everyone will know more about God. Everything about God. That is the reason I believe today the enemy is against this nation. That is the reason I believe that there is a spiritual battle, you know, upon this nation. That is the reason I believe that, that you know, we, we see the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah trying to invade this nation. That is the reason I believe that, you know, uh, everything what we are seeing today, it is not like that day. Things are changing. You know, everything happening today, there is a spiritual battle. And now is the time. And this is the time. God gave me this word and God sent me all the way from all the way from India to let you and me know that we are to stand in the gap during this season. We are out to stand in the gap. The very first minute we landed in the United States of America, I came to St. Louis and from there, before leaving the airport, we sat down, me and one more pastor, we sat down, we remembered how, how people came from here. We heard many testimonies of the missionaries who came from here. So what we did was, we sat at the airport and for half an hour, for half an hour, we just released the scriptures of blessing over this land. We were sitting in the airport and we were releasing this, you know, scriptures, blessing America. And after that, we entered into the land. Because we know how it was. And now, church, this is the time for you and me, for us to gather together and stand in the gap. You may say that we all pray for this nation. Yes, we do pray. But prayer is something different from standing in the gap. Here, God is asking, God is searching for someone who could stand in the gap for this nation. I believe when we stand in the gap for this nation, every plan of the enemy will be, you know, changed upside down. Everything will be changed upside down and the situations will change. Everything will change. God, you know, God will eradicate every power of darkness and he will establish his throne in this nation. His name will be glorified in this nation. Even in the, uh, you know, the coming elections or whatever, in everything, God's name will be glorified. God is expecting you and me to pray, to stand in the gap. What is standing in the gap? What is the difference between praying and standing in the gap? Yes, we do pray for our nation. When we pray for our family, we pray, Lord, bless our nation, bless America, bless the president, bless the leaders, bless everything. Yes, we do pray. What is the difference between praying and standing in the gap? Standing in the gap is nothing but having compassion or burden over something. 
just praying is something different and burdened for something and you know burdened and with, with pain that's why Paul says and I think in Galatians chapter uh, 4 and verse 19 he, he, he says that uh, for Christ to be formed in you I go through labor pain for Christ to be completely formed in you he was so much burdened for Christ to be formed in a church or in an individual that is the burden we should have when we pray for this nation. God is calling every individual here to rise up and stand in the gap for this nation because the intention, the idea, the plan of God is to change the situation upside down. Every, every one of us will have a desire for this nation the way it is right now. The way it has, you know, you are expecting this nation to be. This is the blessed nation ever. This is the blessed, blessed nation ever. God wants to bring back and restore everything spiritually I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, uh, you know, the economical things or anything. I'm talking about spiritually. This nation will restore when you and me rise up and stand in the gap. Nehemiah, when he heard about the nation, its wall, wall has been destroyed. The Bible says he was in the king's palace. He did not have anything to be worried about. But the Bible says he was burdened. He was broken deep inside. And he, he, he even stopped eating for nearly four months. He fasted and he prayed for the nation. He prayed for the nation. We, we, when when someone, something happens in a family, when we pray for our children, we, we get burdened and we pray for them. With tears, we pray for them. We forget about the timing, what, you know, sometimes you'll be working something, you'll be in the kitchen or you'll be working something. Sometimes you think about your children or something about your future or something about your family. Immediately we close down every work we are doing. We go and kneel down and with tears we pray. That is what God is expecting us to do for this nation. That is what God is expecting us to do. Church, this is the day. Let, 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 let us take a decision today. Yes, Lord, I am praying for my nation, but from today I am going to stand in the gap. I'm going to carry this burden. Who else is going to stand in the gap? Because the Bible says his eyes are searching for someone who could stand in the gap. With compassion. With burden. And number two, what is standing in the gap? It is a sacrificial prayer. Our, our, it, it should cost us something when we stand in the gap. I don't know if it is right or wrong. I don't know what I did was right or wrong. Even now, I don't know. You may feel it's wrong or you, I, I don't know about that. But this is what, what I did. I, my mother was a saved person. I came into the Lord uh, February 1st, 2000. And my dad and my brother was into the world. They were into the world. And, and, and I felt that, I, I told them, just because I'm a pastor, I don't want you to, you know, come take baptism or do whatever and come and, uh, you know, show, show yourself as a saved person. No, no, no. God has to touch. You should have a personal encounter with God. So what I did was, in my room, I brought sand, sand into my room. I just spread it over the floor and I knelt down on the sand every single day. It will pain for me. It will hurt me. Sometimes it even, sometimes it bleeded. But in the pain, I used to pray, Lord, I'm standing in the gap for my dad. I'm standing in the gap, gap, for, my, uh, gap for my brother. Save them, oh God. Touch them, oh God. The God who touched me, touched them. You know what? God did not let me to be like this for a long time. In, in few weeks, God touched them. And no one knows that I prayed like that. I till now, I don't know if it is right or wrong. But I did that. I, you know, it... it it gave me some pain. It costed me something. And God did answer that prayer. Today my whole family, we can say as Joshua, me and my household are serving the Lord. Amen. This is what God does when we stand in the gap. When, when I came to, when God led me uh, to a different place in India to, to, you know, to, to, to minister, it was an unknown territory for me. It was unknown territory. Even last evening I was sharing about that. You know, sometimes I was without food and many, many challenges I faced. After a long time, we got a place for rent to worship the Lord. Even now we are in a rented building. We worship there. But uh, uh, when, I, when I took that whole place for rent, it was around uh, 7,500 rupees Indian money for that rent. So we paid such a big money and uh, no one will turn up to the church. No new souls. We initiated. We go for personal evangelism. We did everything. No one came to the church. Only three people were coming to the church. Sometimes I used to, you know, 
during the night times, God will give me good revelations to preach in the morning. I will be ready. Yes, Lord. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock is the service. I am going to share this word. I do believe that my people are going to be blessed by this. I will be, you know, so happy to share the word of God. I will get ready. I will dress, be dressed up. I will come to the church. I will sit and wait for some time. 9 o'clock, no one will turn up. 9.15, no one will turn up. 9.30, no one will turn up. And I have never quit. I, I always, you know, stand up and I started the service and I used to, I, I preached to the chairs. I preached to the walls. I preached to the mat. I preached. I did not quit. I told the enemy, I am not going to quit. I am going to do what God has called me to do. No matter who is here or who is not here, I am just going to do what God has called me to do. I believe that the angels are here. So I am going to preach and I am going to conduct the service. The enemy wants to discourage me and he doesn't want me to minister to him. Nothing can stop me serving my God. And I started, you know, preaching to the chairs and to the, to the walls, to the pillars and everything. You know what happened? One day I was completely burdened. Lord, what is happening? We are paying so much of money and, and, and we, we have this wonderful place and people are not turning in. What is happening? And I recollected what I did for my dad and for my brother. I was kneeling down on the altar. I was kneeling down. One day, I was just kneeling down and praying. Uh, when I was praying, God, I, I just reminded to, to do something different and something which, which could cost me. So what I did was, I just knelt down and walked over all the, throughout the church. I just walked over, kneeling down, every single tiles, every single place. I just, Lord, fill this place with your presence. Fill this place with your people. Fill this place with souls of God. Bring in souls to this place. Bring in, Lord, unsaved people. Bring in the people who don't know you. Bring them in. Let your glory be revealed in this place. I started walking it pain. It caused pain to me. I started doing that the same year. God opened the windows of the heaven and God released such an anointing. And you know, from uh, I think uh, October, October 1st, 2010, we started a new church where we are right now. It is just going to be, it is five years now. And by God's grace, yesterday I spoke to them. My people in the church, they said two more families added. And now it is about 30 to 31 families attending the church now in five years. It is the work of God. And I do believe, I declare the same thing in this place right now. In Jesus' name, I prophesy. Lord, let, let the pastors, let the pastor's family, let every congregation, let every individual be, be blessed. I stand in the gap in this church right now. And I release the supernatural blessing upon this church. Let this church be a streams of salvation to the, to the, to the complete city around here. And let, let the streams flow from here and reach the unreached. And do greater things for your glorious name's sake. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. This, this, you know, that is the reason God is speaking to us. This is the heart cry of God. This is the sound of God. It is not my word. It is the word of the almighty God. Amen. Amen. God wants us to stand in the gap. Let us cost us something. You know what I'm telling? Let us cost us something. Let us, let it cost our sleep. Rise up in the night and pray for this nation. Who else will do if we don't? Let it cost something. Fast for a day for this nation. Who else will do if we do not? When I came to America, my, my expectation was different. But when I came here, I saw people like you throwing themselves on the altar. Weeping and crying for this nation. When I landed in Las Vegas, when, I was, when the flight was about to land, I saw beautiful lights which I did not see in any city where I landed. Immediately which came to my mind, my thought was, it is called as a sin city. But Lord, these are the lights, your children, I believe, that you kept in this earth, in the, in the city. These lights are no one or nothing. It is every Christian, every person who is carrying you in their hearts. When they understand their purpose and when they stand in the gaps, how this whole city will be enlightened and how the darkness will get out of the city and how your throne will be established. And finally, standing in the gap is understanding the heart of God and pray. I will just say this and conclude. Understanding the heart of God and praying. 
when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he came to Abraham and said, God did not have any, you know, he has no business to come and share to a man. It is his creation. He could have come down, he could have destroyed it, he could have did, did whatever he wanted. But the Bible says, as a friend, he came to Abraham and he shared. When Abraham understood the heart of God, he knelt down. Sorry, he, he just went to the presence of God and he, and he had a conversation. Lord, if, if, if there is 50 righteous people, will you still destroy? When I, when I was reading the Bible, six times he spoke to God and six times God answered him. My God, he's a God who speaks. We have so, you know, so great and so wonderful God. He, he was communicating with Abraham and, and when he prayed, understood the heart of God and prayed, God did what he has to do according to the prayer of Abraham. Understanding the heart of God and prayer. Even when, even when Moses came to God and said, Lord, in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 32, Lord, I know these people sin, but forgive them. Otherwise, blot out my name from the book of life. He was ready to sacrifice his own eternity and he understood the heart of God and he prayed. God had mercy, compassion, and God changed his plan for the people. Even today, God has a purpose for you and me. God has a purpose for you and me. Let us understand that. Let us stand in the gap. Yes, we are out to pray for our family. We are out to stand in the gap for everything which we are connected to more than anything. You and me alone are trusted, entrusted by God to stand in the gap for this nation. Let that plan of God be fulfilled. Let His holy name be glorified through that. May God bless you. so very much and uh, if you came next search you can hear me again and that would be, that would be lovely and, and yeah please come forward too uh, Dr. Henry Sumraj who is a member of our church and a, a key leader with the Tamil India and this is their pastor Swish, who, who, who I'm not saying it right Swish, Swish. Suresh who comes here every month to, to lead the congregation once a month comes over from California so that they can have their worship here for the for the Las Vegas community for Tamil language. So we're grateful. And we are so blessed that we're able to uh, participate in ministries that bring people to us from around the world with our Tamil language ministry and with our Korean ministry and with our Liberian church ministry. Uh, that's something that uh, we get to be blessed by. So thank you so much for being a part of this ministry and sharing with us. And such a part of the world. So